haven't had a conversation, my friend, have we? Not yet. Not yet, okay. And uh, you were just passing. You very kindly agreed to be filmed. Very kind of you. And what you have told me, so your name is? James. Your name is James. And you're from England? I'm an, Eng I'm an English man. Yes, from an English family. <laughs> okay, you're an English man from an English family. And you live here in northwest London? Yes, yeah, so I live in Kilburn, approximately five minutes walk from here. Okay, you live five minutes walk from here, okay. And you've told me you believe in God, but you don't have a religion. Is that right? I kind of believe in in all the religions. I, I think I think all of them have have something something good and a positive message from all of them. I think okay. so. All the religions have something positive about them. Fair enough. Uh, but you don't follow a particular religion, James. I wouldn't like to pigeonhole myself down to one religion. No, not particularly. Okay. When I stopped you, you said, "Sorry, I'm just going past. I'm going to." get some milk or something you came out from home to buy some milk from the shops here i've simply come out just to get some shopping and groceries yes okay get some milk and what i can tell you is in the hereafter god is going to give you a river of milk so that sounds pretty good i mean you've come to buy some milk and you might be going back uh, eventually getting a, a river of milk sounds pretty good to me i'll never have to buy milk again i suppose okay fair enough okay <coughs> excuse me right okay right james you believe in you're sure about god Yes, I'm very sure about okay. it. Okay, so God, okay, let's just define God, firstly. God is the one who's almighty, all-powerful, all-seeing, all-hearing, all-knowing. There is nothing like him. He has no parents. He has no children. Um, and uh, absolute, almighty, all-powerful creator of the universe. This is how we believe in God. This is what we believe about God. Would you agree with that about God? Where does Jesus fit into all this? Okay, the very good question. Very good question. We believe that Jesus was somebody sent by God. Christianity says Jesus is God himself. God who became a man, mm -hmm. part of a trinity. So Christianity says, the Christian religion, Christianity says Jesus is God, part of a trinity. The Muslim religion, Islam says, the Quran says, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that Jesus is somebody sent by God. So what do you believe about Jesus? Do you believe he's God or sent by God? I don't think any of us really know because we wasn't there. Fair enough. But what is your opinion? Do you have an opinion on that at all? I, I like the idea that God being an embodiment of, of kind of all of us. I, I, prefer, I prefer the idea that we're all God rather than I should bow down to a God. I, I, I think I'm more open to the idea that we're all God in some aspect rather than me being little me and there being big God that will punish me if I do something wrong. So then the question is, are you saying there is a God or there is no God? That's the question. You say you like the idea we're all gods, but I mean... So is there a God who made everything, a created... Sorry, you said your name, James. What do you do, James, by the way? Uh, I'm actor and musician. Okay, you're an actor and a musician. An English actor and a musician. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> That's fine. Brilliant. Sounds good. English actor, would you say? A British actor. Uh, I can, I can do, do any acting, really. Okay, well, Anything. <laughs> fine, okay. okay well, what, on uh, in films or on, on stage or...? All, all of those things. All of those things. In particular, fine. film. Filming. You do filming, okay, you're a filming actor, okay, uh, fantastic, it's very, very kind of you to stop here on a cold day and, and be filmed and, <laughs> and give it, that's right, it's very kind of you. No problem at all. And sir. you're a very cheerful, friendly guy, you're laughing, it's fantastic, too many miserable people around, Indeed. very kind of you, yep, yep. <laughs> Indeed, I have to agree with you there. Okay, right, okay. So, what do you believe, do you believe there's a creator who made everything, James, or you believe that, you're not sure? Oh. Too big of a question. Uh, I, I, I'd, I'd be silly, and uh, I'd be a fool to say that I know. I'd be a fool to say that that, that I know. Very kind of you, very polite of you. Okay, so you're not really certain there's a creator then. I don't think there's a, there's, a, there's any real way to, to really really. Uh, oh no! Oh, it's, oh it's a, that's a really really good really good question. I, I don't have the answer. I don't. Okay, have the very kind of you. Lovely, you're a lovely guy. You look guy. Just lovely talking with you. Okay, fantastic, uh, James. Okay. Okay, there are really, f I would suggest, four pieces of evidence or four proofs in common language that there's a creator, and the fourth is the most powerful. Okay. First one is something called the cosmological argument or cause and effect. Everything that begins to exist must have the cause. Everything be has a beginning, including the universe mm -hmm. and uh, the Big Bang Theory, and therefore something must have caused it to happen. And we believe that thing that caused the universe and everything to happen is the creator, is God, and that's God. That's what we believe. God doesn't need another cause because if he, he, if he needed a cause and then that cause would need another cause, yeah, you'd go back infinite. You'd go, you'd go back forever. 
So you have to have a, sorry, one more, my friend. On, you have to have a cause that's uncaused. You have to have a creator who doesn't need uh, another cause, which means he doesn't have a beginning. How is that possible with God? Because we believe space and time in this universe are linked together. It's a space-time continuum. Mm -hmm. Because the Creator is outside this universe, He's outside our space-time continuum, and He may be outside time altogether, which means He doesn't need a cause. He created space, time, and everything. I, l I like what you're saying. Very, very, it's very rich and great content. And I have to say, I do agree, However, I would like to know your opinions on whether A, is God male or female? And B, could God, could you define God as one, as one person, one consciousness? Or, or would you prefer to uh, label God as uh, a, a universal consciousness that could not be defined by one person or one thing or one mind? What, what, what's, what's your opinion on that? Is, is God one person in, in your eyes or is God... Uh, an, aura, an aura of of, of, of everything. Well, very good, very very good questions. Very good questions. I'm impressed. I'm impressed, James. Okay. Firstly, is he male or female? Neither. He is not male or female. God says in the Quran, uh, there is nothing whatsoever like him. There is nothing like him whatsoever. And so he's not male or female. We call him he because he refers to himself as he uh, in the Quran. But he's not masculine or feminine and there is nothing whatsoever like him. Now, is he one being or is he like a, a general being all over the universe? He's one being. We believe he's one being, but he's everywhere with his knowledge and his seeing and his hearing mm -hmm. and his power. He's not physically everywhere because the point is this also, it makes sense logically. Because if God was everywhere physically, then you'd say he's in the shops over there, he's in London, he's in America, he's in China, he's in the bathroom, the toilet, he's everywhere. That means, <laughs> but then you see, it doesn't make sense. It, it sounds silly. Also, it would mean it would lead to pantheism. Everything is God because if okay. God is everywhere, then everything is inside God, God inside everything. That means then everything becomes God and that's dangerous. We believe that he... Is it dangerous? Is it dangerous? It is dangerous because look, if you say everything is God, then you start worshipping, uh, and there are false religions, okay, okay. yeah, you make false, exactly, false idols, and there are religions, I, I mean, obviously it's a Hindu religion, they worship trees, monkeys, cows, uh, all sorts of animals, and these, they say because God's inside them, or they're inside God, something like that, and it's dangerous, because there is a separate being called God. Anyway, let me go on to the proof that God exists first, go on, go on. and we'll come back to it. Okay, fine. As I said, the fourth is the most powerful, James. Okay, right, James. Second piece of evidence is, it's called the teleological argument or teleological argument. Do you know what that means? I don't know. I don't, I don't know the words. Okay, define, it's it's define. to do with uh, it's to do with design, or more specifically, the fine tuning of the universe. The universe, if you look at it, it looks as if it's very uh, intelligently designed. It looks as if it's been, uh, not just looks as if been. It's clearly been very finely tuned for it to work. Everything is finely tuned. Did this come about by chance or did someone design it this way? We would suggest that someone designed it this way and I'll give you one piece of evidence. Okay, if you're talking about animals and plants and the earth and the planets, you might say they've developed over many years or evolved. But the whole universe itself, when it started, it was what they call a low entropy universe which means a universe, even though when it started from a singularity, from one point, that initial explosion, the Big Bang, uh, led to a uh, universe of low entropy. Do you know what that is, entropy? Define entropy. Entropy is the degree of disorder in the universe. And when it started, there was a high degree of order. That means there was low entropy universe. That's how the universe started. Even though it may seem like a random explosion, the Big Bang, it was actually quite ordered in the result it produced. This is not my opinion. This is the opinion of astrophysicists, particle physicists, and so on. And Professor Roger Penrose, have you heard of him? I haven't heard of Professor No. He's prof Thank you, very kind of you, to be so humble. Uh, he's Professor of Mathematics at Oxford University, and he's worked out the probability of this universe being a low entropy universe by chance and the probability is 10 to the power of 10 which means 10 multiplied by itself 10 times all of this huge figure uh, what is that like 10,000 million multiplied by itself 123 times 
So it res to one. So the probability of the universe being a low entropy universe is 10 to the power of 10, all of this in brackets, to the power of 123 to 1, James. Okay. So it's an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly small chance of the universe being like this. I'll give you one example. You've heard of the Mona Lisa painting. I love the Mona Lisa painting, yes. Okay, you love the Mona Lisa painting. Who is it? Leonardo da Vinci's painting. Of course. You're you're the, well, no, sorry, you're not an artist. You're a musician yes. and an actor, okay. Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci's painting, it's called a, uh, what is it? It's priceless, which means it's, it's just, you can't work out the value. It's just so expensive. Okay, mm -hmm. it's an amazing painting. And if we threw some paint on the ground, some 10 or 20 or 50 tins of paint, would we end up with a Mona Lisa painting? Very, very unlikely, right? Uh, art can, cannot be defined. Art, okay, fine, okay. Art, art no, but if we just threw paint randomly on the ground, yes. would we end up with a Mona Lisa? Statisticians, experts in mathematics, would say, yes, you would, eventually. If yes, you kept eventually, throwing... Yes. Eventually, right? Probably, in terms of probability, yes, yes, eventually. Exactly right, that's right. Very good, very excellent. Thank you, I like it. Okay, but the reality is, if you threw 20 tins of paint on the ground, it would be very difficult to end up with any face, let alone a Mona Lisa. You'd only, be difficult. Only twenty tins. Only twenty tins. Yeah, there's a very low chance of that happening. Uh, a thousand tins? No, you're gonna need twenty million billion tins. No, but then if you did, if you threw that many tins on the ground, you'd end up with more colours and more mess. Indeed, yes, you would. But, but they've now the experts have said the probability of a Mona Lisa on the ground from some paint thrown on the ground is more likely than the universe being like this by chance. Okay. Okay. I'm so it looks like it looks like someone's designed it this way. I'd have to agree with you there. You agree that somebody designed you? Are you agreeing there's a creator then? Yeah, I, I, I do agree there's a, cre a creator. Okay. I didn't go on to the fourth one, which is the most powerful, but you've already agreed there's a creator. Okay, let me give you the fourth, third, and fourth. You're very, very kind to stand here, James, on this cold winter's day in London. <laughs> very kind of you. God bless you. God bless you. May God reward you. That's what we say. Okay. The third piece of evidence is throughout history, there have been some incredibly good people. Let me <laughs> get, get, get closer, get closer. <laughs> That's fine, no, no. Not too close. It looks strange. No, not too close. Sorry about that. Okay. There have been some incredibly good people throughout history. At some stage in their life, James, they came to mankind and said, God has spoken with me. God has communicated with me. This is the message. The message all of these people gave was exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Why did they do this? The question is why they... One possibility is they were being altruistic, which means they wanted to help society, yes. but they were basically lying. They were liars. Okay. One possibility. Second possibility is that they had some sort of delusion. They had megalomania or schizophrenic or paranoid. I love this argument. You're about, you, you, okay, I love where you're going with this. I can't wait to start talking. Keep going, keep going. Keep okay, going. okay. Keep going. Uh, but the third part, okay, second possibility is, third possibility is they were genuine prophets of God. That's the third okay. possibility. I would yeah. say there are only three possibilities. Number one, is it possible they were just being altruistic, which is trying to help people, but they were actually lying? It wouldn't make sense because... It wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense. Uh, you no, agree? Not at all. No, uh, yeah, completely agree, yeah. The people I'm talking about are the prophets of God. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, mm -hmm. Joseph, Jacob, mm -hmm. Jesus, and Muhammad. Excuse me. <laughs> now, so they weren't... Because they were telling people not to lie, if they went and lied about speaking with God or communicating with God or God communicated with them, it wouldn't make sense, James. No. Right. Second possibility, did they have some sort of delusion or megalomania and so on? Again, that doesn't make sense because the character was so incredibly good and upright and they didn't get any material benefit. They didn't get like, you know, they didn't get, lo uh, you know, uh, lots of beautiful women and beautiful houses to live in or transport. That's not documented. We, we don't know. Maybe they did. It's not documented. Okay. It is documented. They live very simple lives. They renounce the world to get close to God. That's what they said. And the prophet said that. They renounce the world, generally speaking, to get close to God. And uh, it wouldn't make sense that they were getting... You know, so, and, and this showed, the character showed, I would suggest. So really the third possibility is, James, that they were genuine prophets of God. And the amazing thing is, they all came with exactly the same message. They all said, believe in one God. They all said, we should submit ourselves to the Creator, this God. And the word submission, by the way, in Arabic is Islam. A Muslim is a submitter 
to the will of God. Okay. So a Muslim is a submit to the will I of God. I didn't, I didn't actually know that. That's a good piece of information. Though. There you are. So they all submitted themselves to God and uh, they were all Muslims. That's what submission means. But also their beliefs were always the same. It wasn't just that they submitted to God, they were Muslims. They actually taught the same thing. There are six beliefs of a Muslim and all of them taught the six beliefs. I'll tell you what they are. One is there is one God almighty or powerful or seeing or living number two believe in the angels of God all the prophets of God told people to believe in angels of God angels are God's workers they do whatever God tells them to do they have no choice in the matter thirdly they talked about God sending down books and revelation and these prophets of God some of them actually had books from God okay thirdly fourthly in the prophets of God so angel of one God angels of God books of God prophets of God they themselves claim to be a prophet of God and they told people God has sent prophets to all nations at all times throughout history and God would still keep sending prophets until the last prophet the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him okay so one God angels of God books of God prophets of God fifthly they all talked about day of judgment and heaven and hell there's a day of judgment when God will be the judge and there will be heaven and hell. I'll just give you a sixth point. Then you can, I know you want to say something. If you just hang on one moment. Yeah. Sixthly, on, on. they all talked about Qadr and Qadar, which means predestiny and pre-knowledge. God knows everything and everything is planned by God around our free will. We have free will and free choice. Mm -hmm. He plans everything, our lives around this free will. Uh, and he can do that because he's, uh, he uh, is outside our space and our time frame. Mm -hmm. He's outside space and time frame. And that's why he can do it. So you wanted to say something? Okay. <laughs> I just want to just, uh, okay. This is just one of the things I, w I wanted to ask you. Is um, you're if, a lovely, cheerful guy. If, I love your smile and cheerfulness. If all of those people, like you said, all, all believe in the same thing, they all believe in the same thing. Why is it then now we've ended up as the, with the separate religions? Very, very, very good. Excellent question. I love your question. Like I love your questions. I love your thought. Are you a very thoughtful person? Indeed, I'm thinking about this stuff on a daily basis. I, I, really, you've, nice been about, yeah, you've been thinking about you've been thinking about things on a daily basis. Fantastic. God, amazing, amazing. God bless you. Very, very kind of you. Okay, how can we have different? Things? Because look, my friend, when the prophets left the earth, so people love the prophet so much. For example, they said this prophet came to my family. My family must be the chosen people. These are chosen people. We're chosen people. The prophets came in our family. Mm -hmm. And then you end up with a religion. I'm not going to mention the religion, but you can okay. probably work okay. it out yourself. Yeah. Another prophet was sent by God. And this prophet came and he was such a, such a great guy. Uh, and he was born without a father. So people loved this guy so much. They said he must be the son of God. Later on, it doesn't make sense. God has a son. So 325 years later, uh, under the Roman Emperor Constantine, the Christian religion was born. And the people said, this great guy called Jesus wasn't just the son of God. He's actually God incarnate. He's God himself. He's God who became a man. The message has been changed. The message has been lost. And even if you look in the Bible today, you won't see the message of Christianity. You'll see the message of Jesus uh, saying that I am somebody sent by God, prophet of God, messenger of God. He never says, I am God, worship me. And it doesn't make sense. Okay, I got a now I've got the real the real big juicy question. That's for you. right. I, I, it's your chance to grill the Muslims, as they say. Kill the Muslims. Kill the Muslims. Grill the Muslims. Yes. Okay. Yeah, not, no, yeah, not kill the Muslims. <laughs> grill the Muslims. Sorry, just to clarify. Grill means to question and ask the Muslims. So it's grill the Muslims, not kill the Muslims. Okay. No, we're gr definitely grilling. Um, okay. I, I, what I would like to know is, from your point of view, uh, as you said. Uh, one of these possibilities was that these people might have been deluded or, sch or schizophrenic. Uh, uh, um, what would you now say if someone from this day and age, right now, um, was claimed they were having a spiritual experience and claimed they were being communicating with God and said that uh, they, were God, they, they, they were expressing some message personally sent to them from God, like in this day and age? Okay, that's what, a good question. What, what would you say? Okay, that's that? a very good question. If somebody came to me and said, God has spoken with me, I'm a prophet of God. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What, I'd, I'd like to know, what, why is that delusional now and, and schizophrenic now, whereas as then, it was it was real and it had to be written down and it's it's a real thing then and now it's just a schizophrenic madman on the, on the, if someone started saying that on the street we'd section them tell, tell me is that society is that 
Is this the, is that society or is this a conspiracy? What, 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 do you, what do you think about that? Fantastic. Very, very, very good. Good, 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 juicy questions. Okay. Now, so is this a conspiracy? Now, if it happened today, okay. One thing I know is there will be no more prophets of God because the Quran says so. In the Quran, God says there will be no more prophets after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because he is called the Khatimun Nabiin, the seal of the prophets. He's the prophet. He's the last prophet. Anyway, let me give you some logical reasons why it's not possible. Look. Okay. Now, if a man, this better be good. Better be good you bet I'm going to be really struggling for you to convince me otherwise of this, because uh, I, I, I just I'm really interested to see what you have to say about this. Okay, well, okay. Now, if I met a man today, okay, and he said, God communicates with me. Mm -hmm. God, in some form, communicates with all of us. Okay. God guides whoever He wants. God says in the Quran. So God guides all of us. I mean, the fact that you're here today, I would suggest that it could be guidance from God. God has sent you here. It always feels like that every time I, c I see you guys. It always okay, that's fine. Like that's that. good. That's good. Okay, so we say we would say it's guidance from God. Everything is guidance from God. So yes, God does guide everyone. Uh, but if someone claimed to be a prophet of God, then I would suggest that he can't be a prophet because the Quran says the prophet Muhammad is uh, the last prophet. But hang on, let me go further forward. Now, let's go back to the prophets. I'll give you, and this will answer your question in a better way. <coughs> when the prophets of God, like Abraham, Moses, Noah, David, Solomon, Joseph, Jacob, Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, came to mankind and said, God has spoken with me. I'm a prophet of God, I'm a messenger of God. What did people say to the prophet? They said, you're mad. Yep. You're deluded. Yes. You're a liar. Yeah. This is what they say to the prophets of God. Yes. But the prophets of God proved to mankind that they were sent by God by doing something. Do you know what they did? Performed miracles. <laughs> oh. That's right. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. They performed miracles. So they performed miracles to show that they were indeed chosen by God, sent by God, and they were prophets of God. Now, let's go, let's come, let's, 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 let's look at some evidence. And this is really the fourth proof that God exists. This is what I was coming to. Jesus, when Jesus was sent by God to the, uh, and he claimed he's a prophet of God, people did the same thing to prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. Jesus, peace be upon him, performed the miracles of healing the blind, healing the leper, mm -hmm. and healing the, uh, and bringing the dead back to life mm -hmm. with God's power. That's what Jesus did to prove that he was a prophet of God. He was also born without a father as a proof. That's Jesus, peace be upon him. Now let's go forward 571 years after Jesus to the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was chosen as a prophet of God and he was given a miracle. Do you know what the miracle was that he was given? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. The miracle that he was given is a miracle that exists today. If you said to me, I want to see proof that Jesus brought the dead back to life, I'd have to say the proof is the Quran says so. But then you say, well, so it's written on the Quran. How does that prove? How does that, I don't know whether the Quran is from God. You see the point? However, I'm going to give you a proof that the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet of God, and that's the Quran itself. That's itself. The Quran, the Quran okay. is the proof. Okay. The Quran is the proof, the miracle that proves that the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet of God, peace be upon him. And therefore, it's a proof that Islam is true. And in fact, it's the most powerful proof God exists. Now, you're probably thinking, James, how can a book be a miracle? You've got Harry Potter, you've got Shakespeare, you've got Dickens. <laughs> no, you haven't got to, no, you haven't got to say, you haven't got to go down that road. No, you don't. No, no, no. Okay, okay, well, okay. No, no. But how do we know the Quran's a miracle? I'll tell you why. Now, I'd like you to have a look at the reasons the Quran's a miracle. And I'd like you to tell me, James, whether you know whether it's it's powerful or not what do, what do you think about the quran let me tell you the quran is a book 1400 years old mm -hmm. and it's a book that's remained unchanged how do you know how do we know because scholars ac experts in history uh, accept the quran has not changed you will find the same quran wherever you go in the world today Okay, same version. You don't get two versions of the Quran. There's only one version. And also, this is something uh, as written here is that agreed by everyone. Oh, everyone oh, no, 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 honestly. Oh, come no, no, on. No, no, James, I'm not, I'm not lying to you. Oh. Look, you can Google it. You can, you can ask Sheikh Google. You can ask Sheikh Google. You, know, the, you can ask uh, uh, Professor Google, if you like. Professor Google, Sheikh Google. 
and you'll see that, okay, they might not like what the Quran says. Obviously, they don't believe in it. If they believe the Quran, they're Muslims. But they agree the Quran is an old book in the Arabic language and it has not changed. And look, you've got 1.8 billion Muslims all over the world, spread out into remote areas of the world. You've got the Rohingya Muslims in Burma. You've got the Muslims in Africa. You've got the Muslims in South America. You've got millions and millions of Muslims in China. M millions of Muslims in Russia. Really? Yes, yeah, that's right. Didn't know that. Did that's not know right. that. That's right. And there are m dozens of millions of Muslims in China. You guys are everywhere now. I'm sorry, we're spreading. Oh my God. <laughs> God. I don't know what to say. Are you good? You're, I can see you're a good actor. Oh Amazing expressions on your face. He's an actor, an English actor. Fantastic. I can see, expression of I can see why you're an actor. You're I love the expression on your face. Okay, look. I, I'm That's not, right. I'm not trying to debunk anything you're no, saying. No, 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 no. I would like someone, you to. I, I'm someone that, that, that <coughs> always that questions everything and, 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 and do not take any, anything for granted and do not... Uh, no matter... <sighs> No, sometimes whatever what everyone believes isn't necessarily right. Just because everyone else is doing it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing to do. I agree with you 100%. I, question. I agree with you 100%. Now, the Quran is an old book. Everyone agrees. Scholars, experts agree. Sorry. Emergency ambulance going past. Sorry. Emergency ambulance possibly going to save someone's life. Indeed. Okay. This message God tells in the Quran gives life. Gives life to human being. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that the difference between someone who remembers God and someone who doesn't remember God is like the difference between a living person and a dead person. If you have a, if you're remembering God, you have a connection with God. It's as if you're alive. But anyway, let's go forward to the Quran first. Let's go to the proof of the Quran. The Quran is a 1,400-year-old book. James, and it's a book that's remained unchanged in the Arabic language, by the way, mm -hmm. not in any other language. Yeah. It's only the Quran if it's in Arabic. God says that in the Quran. In the okay. Quran, God says that the Quran has been revealed in the Arabic language. So any other language is an approximate translation, interpretation of the meaning of the Quran. By, do, by keeping it in the original Arabic language, it means we've always got the original to go back to, to check and reference. Yeah. You see, with the Bible, Jesus spoke Aramaic and Hebrew. We don't have Jesus' teachings in the Aramaic language. The oldest Bible we have is in the Greek language. Now, when you translate from one language to the other, and I'm sure you've heard of Chinese whispers, there's a danger of changing, losing the message. Okay, yeah, I agree. Make sense? I agree, okay. yeah. But the Quran, we've got it in the original language. So you can always go back and check and see if it's correct. Let's have a look at the Quran. The Quran contains lots of scientific statements. It contains statements about the observable universe, James, and it gets everything right. The Quran talks about embryology. The Quran talks about how the universe started. Mm -hmm. what we call the Big Bang Theory today. Mm -hmm. The Quran talks about how the universe is expanding, James. Mm -hmm. The Quran talks about how gravity works mm -hmm. or mass works. The Quran actually alludes to the presence of Higgs boson particles. And that's my favorite one that, that's in the a, Quran. That's a really, that's a re in, in particular, that's a, that's a very specific standpoint that really does do the Quran justice, actually. The, in, in particular... It, it does the Quran justice? In, in relation to the Higgs boson and the kind of the, the prediction of that and the proph prophesizing that, yeah. So the Quran... Yeah. Predicting, prophesying, prophesying the Higgs boson particles does justice to the Quran. Are you saying basically the Quran does talk about it? You've you've obviously researched this, so you're agreeing. Therefore, the Quran must be from outside human ability. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. So, hundred percent, the Quran is from God. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Then, if you accept that, you have to accept Prophet Muhammad is a prophet of God. I, I accept that. I accept that. If you accept, that, then you're a Muslim. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm just oh 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 okay. I went. <laughs> I can't answer that. I can't answer it. I wouldn't say. Oh. Can you be a Muslim? You've done and, you and, and any any other uh, religion at the same time? Or look, can you only okay. be a Muslim. Okay. Can you be a Muslim and something else at the same time? I'll give you an example. Hindu religion has many gods. Uh -huh. The Quran makes it very clear there's only one God. So you can't be a Hindu and a Muslim. Okay, okay, okay. Can you be 
can you be a Christian and a Muslim at the same time? Well, if, Christ, if, if Christian means follower of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, really all Muslims are Christians. But if you mean Christian meaning believing in the Trinity, as Christianity does, and that Jesus is God who became a man, who died for our sins, and, uh, uh, and so on. No, you can't believe in that, because the Quran makes it very clear that no one dies for anyone else's sins. The Quran makes it very clear that Jesus is a prophet of God, messenger of God, word of God, and the Messiah, but not God. And if you look at Jesus in the Bible, you clearly see that's what Jesus says. He says, he is a word of God, he is the Messiah, he is a prophet of God, he's someone sent by God who respectfully, in the Bible, he refers to God as a father of all of us, not of himself only. This is where the mistake happened. Jesus referred respectfully to God as like our father in the Bible and people said, oh, he must be the son of God. But God doesn't have children. It's like then God has a wife and two kids. You know, yeah, my yeah, God, I believe in God. You got a wife and two kids. Yeah, I, well, okay. it doesn't make sense. Okay, yeah, well, I, I, I think father being metaphorically speaking and not not obviously literal, literal, yeah, yeah, not literal but metaphorical. Now, if you say it's metaphorical and it's not literal, automatically you can't be a Christian because Christians will say he's literally the begotten Son of God. So automatically you can't be a Christian and a Muslim. <laughs> oh, you're good. Okay. Um, I think I think you're a very good actor. You must be brilliant on the on film. You're a film actor, right? Of course, of course. Um, okay, right. Any famous films you've been in? Oh God, I, nothing you'd know. But um, okay, right. But I will. Okay, I think if we pigeonhole ourselves into one religion or another religion, I think it's just going to pit, pit us all against each other. No, not at all. The Quran says these are people of the earliest scripture, the people of the book because they also got books from God. So the Jewish people and Christian people got revelation from God. And we have lots of similarities. You know, a vast, a huge amount of Islam and Judaism and Christianity overlap. They're very, very similar. We all believe in God. We all believe in the day of judgment. We all believe in heaven and hell. Uh, Christians believe in Jesus. Muslims believe in Jesus. Uh, Jewish people believe in Moses and Abraham as prophets of God. We also believe in Moses and Abraham as prophets of God. So yes, there's lots and lots of similarities between... Uh, so we don't know, no, we don't. It doesn't mean uh, if a Muslim who follows Islam properly will understand that God has sent prophets to all nations at all times. Come back to the Quran. You've agreed the Quran is from God. Then you have to accept also what the Quran says. Do you accept what the Quran says? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You can't, you can't say it's from God, James. I'll give you yeah. example. Okay, I'm not being rude to you, my no, friend. No, 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 you're very, no, you're a very, very, very nice Thank guy. You, you're a very nice guy. Please. You're a very nice guy, and uh, amazing, lovely expressions and uh, fantastic. And um, uh, if we accept that the Quran is from God, and clearly it is from God, well, shall I show you the reason why it's from God? Go so okay, friend, let's continue. Okay, the Quran also. You've already agreed because of the Higgs boson particle, but let's continue. The Quran also talks about how gravity. Oh, sorry, big pun. The Quran also talks about how mountains are constructed mm -hmm. and their effect on the surface of the Earth, what we today call plate tectonics mm -hmm. or tectonic plates. Mm -hmm. The Quran talks about this. The Quran also talks about how mountains are constructed. Big pun. How the water cycle works in several places. And again, uh, okay. The Quran also talks about how pain receptors for burning are in the skin. The Quran contains no statement, James, which contradicts established science. The Quran doesn't contain a single scientific error. Look, if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has guessed some of these things, or the people around him 1400 years ago had guessed some of these things, they might have got some things right. But they're bound to get some things wrong. The Quran doesn't get a single thing wrong when it comes to science. And yet, it talks about many different subjects. It doesn't just talk about biology, or astronomy, or astrophysics, or geology, uh, or economic system, uh, and so on. It talks about all of these things and gets everything right. Where can it come from, apart from God? Did the Prophet Muhammad remain... Uh, what's the word when, when, peop when people refuse to have any kind of sexual relations with anyone. What's that word called? Are you talking about... Uh, sorry. Chastity. Like yeah. Chastity. Yeah, sorry, yeah, did, chastity. Did, did, did Muhammad remain 
what's the word? Did he, did he remain? Did you, are you saying that, did the Prophet Muhammad get married? Peace be upon him. Is that what you asking? Yes, he did get married. He had, yes, he had many wives. And many prophets in the Bible had many wives. Sometimes people attack the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, by saying, oh, he had many wives. Therefore, you know, uh, it's not the right thing to do. But if we look in the Bible and we look at history, many prophets had many wives. Prophet Solomon had more than you know, 100, 200 wives, more than hundreds of wives, and many prophets had many wives. I thought you said earlier that the prophets had nothing to gain, for example, women and materials. They didn't, because no, 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 well, let me explain. 200 let me, wives. No, no, the prophet, no, this is Solomon. Solomon in the Bible, okay, had many more than a few hundred wives. No, let's come back to the prophets. Yeah, that's a very good point you made. Mm -hmm. Now, the prophets had many wives, so did they do, so therefore, you're suggesting maybe that's why they claim they were prophets. No, 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 no. no, no. That's, 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 that's not what I'm claiming. I, 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 just, I just thought. Wondering why. I, I just thought being a prophet, yes, you'd, prob you'd probably remain uh, chased. Chased, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. You, 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 chased. Yes, you, you mean without getting married? Yeah. Okay, look, the prophets were sent as examples for us to follow. These prophets weren't just people who gave us a message. They were examples that we could lead our lives by. Yes, yes. Now, that, that's a much better way of putting it than, that's a much better way of putting it than, for me, that's what I'd rather take from the Quran rather than uh, getting caught up with what religion's what. I'd, I'd, no, I'd, I'd, no, so they're examples. Now, look, yeah. so if they're examples, and if they said to mankind, don't get married, remain single, yeah. mankind, and if all of mankind followed that, there'd be no humans left. Yes. So it doesn't make sense for the prophets to say don't get married doesn't make sense in fact the prophet said the opposite opposite the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said it is my sunnah it's my way to get married and he said that you should follow this sunnah he encouraged people to get married look say the prophet Muhammad encouraged it now so therefore now with the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him you have to understand that most of his wives were quite old Why? okay why were they were why did he marry them what, so, so he likes he he had a taste for older women. Is what no, no, saying. no, no. What we're saying is that he got married to bring societies together. In in those days, when tribes were people, yeah, communities were fighting, yeah. it's a tribal thing. I understand. So if Prophet Muhammad married a woman from a particular tribe, that tribe wouldn't fight this tribe anymore. Yes, I agree. It, it brought peace. Mm -hmm. This man is a very honourable man. He claims to be a prophet of God. He's married one of our daughters one of our women so therefore we can't fight with him we can't fight with his people because he's got his one of his wives is uh, from our community so this was one of the reasons he got married and this is what you have to understand all of his wives uh, apart from one had been married before okay so they were either widows uh, uh, or divorcees and that sort of thing okay so he married them because he brought these women within the family household it protected them because women on their own I mean today women can live on their own in modern societies okay and feel safe in those days they couldn't you know women on their own would be very vulnerable and so uh, being part of a family was much safer this is one thing you have to understand mm. I have to agree yeah I agree you agree okay, okay let's go forward to the Quran the book uh, James the Quran itself is a book that's easy to memorize God says that in the Quran uh, and millions and millions of people have memorized the whole Quran off by our heart. You're an actor, okay, you're a film actor and a stage actor, as you said. You obviously have to memorize lots of script. Indeed, yes. Right? But memorizing a whole book and millions and millions of people all over the world have memorized the whole Quran off by heart. And most of these people are not even Arabic speaking. They don't speak Arabic. So they don't even understand what they're saying? They may not understand completely what they're saying, but nevertheless, they have memorized it. And they know quite a lot about it. But what I'm saying is, they may not know the Arabic language, but the fact they've memorized it uh, is also a miracle of the Quran. Also, it preserves the Quran all over the world okay, okay. I like that I like yeah. that yeah yeah it preserves the Quran and it shows you there aren't more than one version there isn't more than one version of the Quran there's only one version of the Quran because if people are memorizing a book you'd have different versions to memorize yes. I don't want to criticize the Bible but as you know with the Bible there are many versions uh, the Quran is only one version 
which makes it more authentic and I suppose in, in that sense a lot more authentic okay let's go forward the, the Quran was given to a man the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him James who couldn't read and he couldn't write the Prophet Muhammad imagine a man who can't read and he couldn't write because the God because God planned it that way that's the way that's God's planning and yet he comes up with his words words of science words that are very very powerful a man who wasn't even uh, can't read and write even more powerful where did he get these words from the Quran get everything right when it talks about Christianity it's very clear accurate and correct it talks about Judaism it's correct when it talks about science it's correct when it talks about historical events it's correct when it talks when it predicts things that are going to happen <coughs> in the future it gets everything 100% correct the things the Quran predicted would happen after the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him everything came 100% correct how where does this book come from the, the, the man was obviously having a very deep insightful spiritual experience that from where from from the place where, where the spiritual stuff comes from from the, God the unseen yeah God That's it right. must be God so then he must be getting it from God indeed 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 but let's continue let's continue go on, go okay on. the words of the Quran James have an effect of changing people's lives forever mm -hmm. agree I agree okay this book even though it was revealed a little bit at a time over 23 years James it's got no contradictions in it it hasn't got a single contradiction God says in the Quran have they this is the Quran translated from the Arabic God says in the Quran in Arabic I'm translating into English God says have they that is the non-Muslims not considered the Quran surely if it came from other than Allah other than God they would find in it many contradictions and yet there isn't a single contradiction in the Quran even though it was revealed a little bit at a time over 23 years not a single contradiction and it fits together beautifully you see the Quran was revealed according to situation circumstance time problems Muslims faced problems the Prophet Muhammad faced peace be upon him the messages came down Ver uh, verses of the Quran came down pages of the Quran came down and they were put together as ordered by God through the Holy Spirit which is the title of an angel the angel Gabriel okay. so he was put together as God had ordered and yet it fitted together beautifully and it still fits together beautifully today and you can see in the Quran that it's it's the way it's been revealed it's not it's not it doesn't change over time it's just it's there <coughs> indeed I, I cannot deny the uh, the integrity and the importance of the Quran and I can definitely say that it's a very it's undoubtedly one of the most sacred artifacts that the human race has probably ever produced it's what we're saying human human beings are produced human beings, uh, it's, it's, no but I'm saying human beings are God God's produced I think it's the closest that human beings have probably come to God is things like the Quran and the Bible and things like that is probably is the closest mo mo most precious spiritual artifacts for artifacts that probably the human race can ever come close to okay, let's continue my friend uh, uh, sorry sorry the, mo <coughs> the most gracious art not just artifacts but art in itself I think sorry go on carry on okay <laughs> The way the Arabic language is used in the Quran, James, it's unique, it's powerful, and it's inimitable. The way the Arabic language has been used in the Quran, it's very, very powerful. Okay. Normally, with languages, the language is preserved, and if you look at a book, you will use the language, the rules of the language, to understand the book. The Quran is just so powerful, the Quran itself has preserved the Arabic language. So if you want to know the rules of the Arabic language, which are complex and intricate mm -hmm. and very clever, people actually use the Quran to make sure the Arabic they're using is correct. Okay. Even non-Muslims use it. That's how powerful the Quran is. Wow. Like, 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 like grammatically speaking. Absolutely. Grammatically speaking, the Quran is very powerful, very accurate. Impressive. <laughs> Imp absolutely impressive. This leads us to God's challenge within the Quran, James. Very kind of you to stand here and be filmed in this cold winter's day. God says in the Quran, no one can ever, the key word being ever, 
produce even one chapter like it. And the chapters are called surahs. And this challenge still stands today. Let me tell you what God says in the Quran. I'll translate from the Arabic to the English so you get a full flavor, the full taste of what God says in the Quran. Well, you won't get the full taste, but you'll get some idea of the taste and the flavor from the Quran. God says in the Quran, if you have doubt in what we have revealed to our servant, as the Prophet Muhammad peace on him, then produce a surah, that means a chapter, like it, and call your witnesses besides God if you are truthful. And if you can't do this, and you will never be able to do this, then fear the fire, the fuel of which are going to be human beings and stones prepared for the disbelievers. I like that. I like that line. It's very, so powerful. It's mo moving. Very moving, that particular line. Look, God's saying, look, if you think it's not, if you have doubt, and even if you have some doubt, he doesn't say if you think it's a lie. He says if you have a little bit of a doubt that this is not from God, okay, then write something like it, mate. To paraphrase, God is saying, like, write something like it, mate, and call any. I love your paraphrasing. And, and call whoever you want for help. God's saying, look, you can call anybody. You can call spirits, you can call human beings, you can call experts from Apple computers, anybody, IBM, okay, anybody, call anybody you want, mate, right? And try and write something like it. And God says you can never, ever do it. And God says if you can't do it, and you will never be able to do it, then get ready for a fire, mate. Hellfire. And the fuel of that fire is going to be human beings and stones. Very moving. I feel like I've got no, no choice now but to believe it. Okay. This leads us to what does this book, James, produce today? It's not a big book. It's quite a small book, as you know. It's not as big I, I, as the I've Bible. I've copy at my house. I've, I, I don't know how big it is. Okay. This book, James, has produced the largest practice religion, 1.8 billion followers, and the fastest growing religion. So this book today has not only produced the largest practice religion of Islam and Muslims and the fastest growing religion, the fastest conversion rate in the world today are Muslims. Look, that's in spite of the Islamophobia. Oh, Muslims are terrorists, Islam Muslims are bad. <laughs> there is Islamophobia. That's, that's, all a, that's all a manufactured True. lot. No, but, no, but there is. You read in the papers today, there's a lot of criticism. Of, you know, any day you read, you read that Muslims are bad, Islam's bad. They, you will read that women are oppressed in Islam. And yet here in the high street in London, we have twice as many women becoming Muslims as men. These, these are English really? ladies. That's right. The, uh, pff, wow. That, that, now, that is, that's interesting figures. Whether that's true or not, I, it is I, true. I, I would I, like I, to you. I could I never. Would, if we have, no, every week we have people becoming Muslims here. Alhamdulillah. Thank God. If we have three people converting, or we say reverting back to Islam, at least two of them are women, on average. It's not exactly 100%, but it's on average. Why are women? That women are. That's ironic. Do, do, ironic. Women. It's always portrayed in the media that women are out of favour joining Islam and that it's not a fe female friendly uh, religion. So it's opposite, my friend. Do you know why? Oh, I. It's the opposite. I, 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 I agree. I, I do agree. It's opposite. Do why agree. would you. Look, you would have thought in Western society, women can dress as they want, mm -hmm. do whatever they want, mm -hmm. sleep with whoever they want, eat what they want, drink what they want. Why should they turn to Islam? It's because. Okay, why more women? It's because women are more, I would suggest, more spiritual. And also there's less arrogance and pride in, milk, if we, in women. Yeah. in women. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Men, if you tell them about Islam, oh, I've got Christianity, mate. I'm an atheist, mate. You know, I don't want to follow this religion. It's rubbish, mate. You know what? I'm better than you, mate. Is that attitude. Mm -hmm. Whereas the women, okay, let me, let's hear it. And when they hear it, it makes sense to them. And they don't have the arrogance and pride, so they end up becoming Muslims. It makes sense. Now, just because a lady covers her hair, it doesn't mean she's oppressed. She's chosen to do that. That's what people don't understand. Look, it doesn't mean a wo if a woman walks around naked or in a bikini, it doesn't mean she's more free than a woman who's covered up. The woman who's covered up has chosen to be dressed modestly. You know, which, which, which in, in my eyes is far better, and I'd much rather. I can see why every Muslim man would have would rather have his wife dressed that way than. The traditional English way that we have now. I, I completely agree. Completely agree. 
Okay. Ladies can expose themselves to their husband and in a limited way to their close relatives. But they don't have to walk down the street saying to everyone, look, look at my figure. Look how well, what, what does it achieve? Nothing. No, it's, yeah, I could agree. Okay, so the women aren't oppressed in Islam, they're actually respected more. In this society, when millions of people are reading a newspaper which has got naked women in it, does that mean women are respected more because they're naked women? <sighs> no, it means, all it means is that most men looking at women are thinking of these naked pictures in all the pornography and thinking, what does this woman look like naked? It's destroying. It's yeah. destroying men and it's destroying women. You Muslim people with your values must come here and think this place is an absolute joke because I do believe that personally. I think the, the way that the English people have been programmed and what we've been exposed to is, is, complete, is very distasteful and I think a lot of people, especially women, have lost in their integrity. You Muslims, you must come here and see these women walking around and, and just the general attitude towards towards sex and just generally that whole thing. You must be disgusted by it. You must, honestly, you it seems so, so sinful. So now, the Quran itself, does it, are you, would you agree it's, it, would you agree it's a powerful book? 100%. It's a 100% powerful book. Would you agree it's from, therefore, would you agree it's a, a book that human beings can't produce? Human beings couldn't write a book like the Quran? It, re it would require such intense spiritual insight uh, that the, the writers of the book had originally. That, 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 that kind of intense spiritual insight and communication. From God? From God would, so ha would have to happen again. I don't, I don't, I don't think uh, uh, the, the regular mortal man here could, could, could replicate that unless they were in tune with some seriously intense, religiously intense spiritual experience. From God? From God. From so God basically yeah. you're saying the Quran couldn't be written without God? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Right, that means that means you're saying there's a God? 100%, yeah. Then you have to accept... Pro Look, what does the Quran say? The Quran says about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that al Certainly, you are from amongst the messengers. You are a prophet of God, a messenger of God. The Quran says this. Also, about Jesus and Moses and Abraham, then you have to accept these people as prophets of God. Jesus, Abraham, Moses, Noah, David, Solomon. You accept them as prophets of God, my friend. Then you have to accept Prophet Muhammad as a prophet of God. If you do, then you're a Muslim. <sighs> okay, I'm a Muslim. Okay. Then, my friend, you should confirm that if you're, okay, you're a Muslim. You should confirm by saying two sentences. Uh, let me I, tell you what they are. I wouldn't be able to do it wholeheartedly. Like I wouldn't be able to do it with, like, with conviction. With, with, with conviction and, and why not? Because I, I, I don't feel like I'm, re I'm ready for it. I don't. Okay, like look, let me tell you this, my friend. Look, one second. <laughs> Especially not. I don't think I'm ready to actually say it on camera and then and then have it distributed. And no, I don't no, feel like. One second, one second, I don't one feel like I'm, no, no. I'm look, ready for that. you do agree there is one God. Quran, Quran. Do you agree the Quran is from God? Yes, I believe it's from God, but I wouldn't okay. define God as one person. No, no. One second. Okay. You believe the Quran is from God? Yes. Okay. So you believe whatever the Quran says? Oh, fuck! You're good at this. Damn you. Woo! No comment. I can't, I can't, I can't, you I can't have to. answer. But well, you answer. can't say it's from God, but it's not speaking the truth. Oh, that is good. That's, I know. Oh, God, I'm contradicting myself. Oh, God, you guys are good. You, you guys are good. You've done this before, haven't you? Bloody hell. Um, okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. If you agree from then, if you agree what the Quran says, then the Quran says that it's only from one God, the Creator of the universe, the same God who sent all the prophets, uh, Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, David, Solomon, and uh, the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet of God. So you agree the Quran is from God. Therefore, you have to accept that there is one God, okay? And you have to accept, my friend, that Prophet Muhammad is a mo prophet of God because the Quran says so. You know, how can we say this is from God and uh, I'm not going to listen to it? You know, for example, if it's your father, right? And your father said, D do this. You're going to say, yes, it's my dad, but I'm not going to listen to you. It wouldn't make sense. It would be disobedient. And, and this is, we're not talking about our father. We're talking about the creator of the universe. How powerful is he? You know, why has he made us? The Quran gives us the answers. Why are we here on this earth? 
Why is there human suffering? Why do ch children die young? All of these are answered in the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, and it all makes sense, you know. And uh, look, my friend, you're an actor. Okay, I don't know how famous you are. A film actor, a stage actor. Okay, right, and a musician. Our life, look, it doesn't matter how, look, as actors and so on, you get lots of women and whatever, I don't know, right? And money and whatever you can get. If you become famous, right? Okay, right? Okay. <laughs> what? Yes, right? Go okay. On. Now, but look, whatever you have, my friend, it's temporary. Yes, I agree. I agree. All, mat all material things are that short term. Yes, pages. it's going to come to an end. And there's another life. The prophets didn't just come and say, do this and do this and don't do this. And this is a message. They give good news. Good news and a warning. What's the good news, my friend? Look, you've got some connection with the Creator as a believer in God. Once you've said these two sentences, you're a Muslim, you have a much stronger connection with God. Your life is going to become a lot happier. Okay? It's going to become a lot happier in this world. And uh, your relationship with your partner, your family, your children will be better. Your children's behavior will be better. The Quran tells all these things and the Prophet Muhammad told us all these things. Okay. In the next life, you're going to go into a place where there will be rivers. You came here, you said, and when I stopped you, you said, I've just popped out from home to buy some milk from the shops, right? In the hereafter, God's going to give you rivers of milk, rivers of honey, rivers of wine, which won't affect your mind in a bad way. This is what God promised in the Quran. Palaces to live in, beautiful partners to live with. But there's something even greater than that. There's something greater than the things in paradise and there's something greater than paradise itself. Do you know what that is? Tell me. You, the, the creator who has covered his face with a covering, a hijab of light. He's covered his face with a covering of light to protect his creation is going to lift up that veil and you and I, inshallah, one day, all Muslims will be able to see the face of the Creator. And that will be just unbelievable. That will be better than paradise and the things in it. It will be better than all the beautiful women, the beautiful palaces we lived in and all the things about it. And that's what the Creator has promised. And that's what the prophets came for. We're here for a reason, my friend. We're on this earth, not just to, you're an actor, you're a, on stage, film, whatever, or whatever you are. It isn't, we haven't come just for that reason, okay? In a way, we're all actors on a stage. The stage is the earth. But we're actually not just acting on a stage on the earth, but actually we're here for a purpose, my friend, and that is to become good enough. We're on this earth here, being, being tested by God. The Quran tells us. Also, we're going through a process of purification a search for God a yearning for God a learning for God and earning for God to get closer to God and so that eventually after the day of judgment we can become good we are good enough to go into his presence this this power this being of immense purity immense power immense beauty immense knowledge infinite knowledge he is the creator of everything he knows everything about everything he is the one you'll have a connection with it's a win-win situation and that's eternal that's permanent in this life you have bills to pay you have hassle you even the partners you give have may cause you hassle yes I agree. Yeah. They're not perfect. No one's perfect. Okay. Whether you're married to Angelina Jolie or whoever you are. I knew you were going to say Angelina Jolie. That's bizarre. That's bizarre. Okay. But still, there are issues. There are problems. Okay. So, okay. my friend. So, now, you have got some connection with the Creator. This is what God promised in the period after. It's a win-win situation. Look, it's an unbelievable promise from God in the Quran and by all the prophets. Look, your life will... Look, sometimes people don't want to be Muslim because, oh my God, I might have ch change everything. Islam doesn't say that. Okay, Islam doesn't say that. You take it stage by stage, slowly. The first thing you need to do, once you've said the words, you're a Muslim, or you be Muslim, you need to start praying. Okay? And as you pray, your love for God will increase. Mm -hmm. As your love for God increase, you'll automatically say, for example, I'm not saying you take drugs now, but you might say, I don't want to take drugs. 
right? Or you might say, I don't want to take alcohol, okay? Whatever, whatever you want to do, right? You might say, I don't want to lie anymore. I don't want to cheat him. I'm not saying you do now, but I'm saying, give an example. As your love for God increases, then you will want to do more for God, mm -hmm. to get closer to God. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. You know, you want to be, you want to be better person. Yeah. And so on. So that's, that's what it's about. So don't think that once you've said the words, you're a Muslim, you've got to change your life completely. No, you don't. You take it stage by stage at your own pace. And God knows what your pace is. Mm -hmm. God says in the Quran, he doesn't burden us beyond our capacity. I love, someone said that to doesn't uh, burden a man beyond his scope. Yes, that's right. Oh, someone said that to me years ago. That's my, that's my, that's my favourite line from the Quran, actually. Yes, really? um, that's my favourite line. So we can't, and it's a win situation, my friend. Love You're not that. losing anything. You're not losing anything whatsoever by getting a connection with the Creator. How can you lose by having a connection with God? God, this look, He's there. Look, He's closer to us than our jugular vein. God says in the Quran. He lo what you have to understand is, he loves us very, very, very much. The Prophet Muhammad said, he loves us more than our own mother loves us. Imagine how much your mom loves you. She woke up in the middle of the night, changed your pampers, your diapers, fed you, breastfed you, whatever, yes? She did all these things for you. How much your mother loves you. Allah, the Creator, loves you more than your own mother. This is, and this is not, we're not talking about uh, Richard Branson, or we're not talking about uh, Bill Gates, uh, rich people. Okay, we're not talking about Ed Sheeran, no. the singer. What? No. We're talking about the creator, who's not a man or a woman, the creator of the universe, no less. Okay, okay. And all you have to do is take two, say two sentences. Okay, I'll say them, I'll say them. Okay. Give them to me. Are we doing the Arabic translation or are we doing the, uh, the English first? The English I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. That there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad, peace be upon him. That Muhammad, peace be upon him. Is his servant and his messenger. Is his servant and his messenger. You say, Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah, illallah, wa, wa, ashadu, ashadu, anna, anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, abduhu, abduhu, wa, wa, rasulahu, rasulahu. Lovely, I love the way you said. You can show you're an actor. Put a bit too much on the on the arm. No, it's lovely. Shows yes. Congratulations, you're a Muslim. You've got a connection now with the Creator. Now you start praying. Okay. Praying. And then yes, right. Congratulations. Can I give you a hug? Please, please do. Oh, you're a good man. You're doing a good job here, man. I appreciate what you're doing. I really do appreciate what you're thing. doing out here. It's a very big thing. So keep strong and uh, keep on Islam, and we'll give you some books. Islam, and things. Brother, welcome to Islam. Thank you very much for the warm embrace. Much appreciated, sir. You now have millions and billions of brothers. And sisters. Thanks to be a Christian, I was happy. I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. Nothing worthy, worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad, peace be upon him. That Muhammad, peace be upon him. Is his servant and his messenger. Is his servant and Thank his you, messenger. Patrick. I converted to Islam a number of years ago now. And um, my life's changed so much for the better. You can't describe how it changes your life. Like, you know, you don't, you end up not worrying about all the materialism. You, you, don't, you don't have none of this depression, none of these worries, because you know this, this is not just it. And don't worry about trying to do the best because you'll find that things will get taken away, like your cravings will go away. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, your cravings for drinking, and eventually they'll just fade, they just fade, you know. I used to worry about these things. But they fade, you know. You, I always thought I could never be a Muslim because I'm doing this, I'm going to clubs and I'm doing all that. I thought I'm never going to cope. But eventually what happens is as you pray, as your iman goes higher, you find that what happens, it balances out and your cravings, they just disappear. You're not, just not interested in it. It's like you've been a little kid eating too many sweets. You just yeah. can't be bothered anymore. Mm -hmm. It goes like that, you know, and you find your life completely changes for the better, you know. So don't I'm try, don't, don't, try and do, don't try and do too much. Do just a little bit at a time. The main thing is to pray, though. Do your prayers. Prayer is the most important aspect. Yeah, it is, yeah. Just okay. Try and get on your prayers. It's a bit of a relief, or do you feel like there's a weight off your shoulders? Uh, 
I don't know how to describe it, chemically in the brain, something, I'm, I'm flooded with, with something that makes me feel really good and, and connected with, with something lo much larger than myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a very wholesome, gra gratifying feeling. Thank you. Stuart. Many people say that. It happens to many. I felt the same way. I felt like a weight's lifted off my shoulder, you know, and I just feel so much happier in my life. So relaxed and peaceful, you know. It's amazing. It's a beautiful religion as well, especially the true Islam, when you understand what it really is all about. You know? <laughs> تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياء في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني وقال إنني من المسلمين